I'm Cheryl with Arthritis Life, and today I'm interviewing an ophthalmologist, Dr. Jen. Yeah, nice to be here. Yeah, so can you just tell us a little bit about what is an ophthalmologist and how um, you're maybe different from an optometrist? Sure, absolutely. I think that's one of the most confusing things of life is feel, figuring out an ophthalmologist versus an optician versus an, opti yes. and, and an <laughs> optometrist. Um, so an optician is somebody that will help you with glasses. Um, mm -hmm. They're usually in the retail world. Um, mm -hmm. An ophthalmologist has gone through medical school and they have gone through a residency. So most of us do surgery and we also take care of medical conditions. Right. And then an optometrist, they go through a different schooling than medical mm -hmm. school. They go through specific optometry school and they concentrate okay. a lot on refractions and contact lenses and glasses. Okay. So although the fields are complementary, um, we have pretty different training. Okay. And um, just uh, for instance, an ophthalmologist has been in school for undergrad and medical school and residency, so that's about 12 years. Mm -hmm. An optometrist will have been in school for undergrad and optometry school, so that's about eight years. How do ophthalmologists help people with arthritis specifically? Yeah, so people with arthritis actually have um, very specific things that can happen to them that mm -hmm. don't happen to the general population. Uh, some of them do happen to the general population, like dry eyes. Right, I have. She's my <laughs> ophthalmologist. So thank you for doing this. <laughs> yes, uh, that's a really common one. Mm -hmm. About 17 to maybe 20 percent of most people with uh, any kind of inflammatory arthritis will have that problem. Right. right. Um, having said that. Um, there are some that are more specific to more like rheumatoid arthritis, for instance, you can have corneal changes where you mm -hmm. can have uh, inflammation of the cornea and you can also develop inflammation of the blood vessels of the retina. Right. So those are all kind of specific things that can happen due to the general inflammation that occurs uh, and related to the same reasons why you might be able to get arthritis. Um, okay. In your years of being an ophthalmologist, have you ever um, encountered things that you wish that this population of patients, the ones with inflammatory arthritis, that, that you wish they knew or things that maybe they might not have been aware of? Yeah, I think um, when you have chronic disease in general, you mm -hmm. are pretty well trained to sometimes just dealing with it. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, because there are so many aspects of the disease, you pick the ones that are bothering you the most, and then you mm -hmm. concentrate your efforts on those, but there are good ways of helping you with some of the more minor mm -hmm. annoyances than um, not. So I would say just having a slightly lower threshold for letting a provider know that you're having problems. Sometimes they might be able to offer you something as simple as a drop or something else right. that might just be able to make you more comfortable. Right. And while that may not be life-changing, at sometimes it is kind of life-changing at the same time because there's yeah. like one less thing you have to worry about. Oh, so I totally. would say that would be the thing that I would say is just, you know, I, it's my job to, to worry about some things for you. Right. So, you know, just let me know that it's happening and we can take it from there. So. That's so true. Like a lot of times the chronic illness patients call each other like warriors, you know, chronic illness warriors. And yeah, it's because you get so used to just pushing through pain and forget that sometimes that pain is a signal, you know, yeah. and whether that pain is from dry eyes or from your joints. Um, I actually didn't know for a few years into my diagnosis that my dry eyes were even related to sure. having rheumatoid arthritis. I was yeah. like, what are you talking about? This is in my joints. But then when I understood the disease more, it made sense that it's inflammation. Um, anything else you want in general patients with arthritis to know? Um, you know, I think that um, a couple of things that are really signs of a problem are mm -hmm. going to be like uh, visible signs of inflammation. So redness yes. is a big one. Mm -hmm. If there's a lot of redness and you have a disease that already tends to make inflammation, mm -hmm. just get it checked out to make sure right. that that level is okay for you. Right. Um, a lot of it is educating yourself on when you should be alarmed. Yes. Um, right. And some of that just needs to have a little bit of a baseline coming in. So mm -hmm. knowing like, okay, well the, the amount of redness I have right now, this is normal for me. Right. But right. That's what so is true. abnormal and, and when should you call is kind of uh, a nice step to take with your provider so that they know kind of what you look like normally and right. what when they should be concerned. But do you ever see patients with juvenile 
Yeah. <clears throat> so ju juvenile arthritis is a little trickier. Um, yeah. There are uh, lots of inflammations that can happen in the eye that mm -hmm. can be more vision threatening. So we do like to see those patients fairly often. Right. Uh, on their upon their initial diagnosis, um, it's nice to be able to see what they look like, yes. and then we have a really low threshold for bringing them in if they develop any kind of redness in their eyes mm -hmm. or any pain or vision changes, uh, because if we catch them early, then the course of treatment is oftentimes very reasonable. If it's caught a little later, it's a little harder to deal with. Sometimes we're shuffled to the bottom of the list because there's a list of like five or yeah. six things that need to happen. Right. But with juvenile, juvenile arthritis, um, actually a very large percentage of them will go on to develop a uveitis or an mm -hmm. iritis. Okay. So um, being able to take care of those kids are early is a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. And do you ever have um, patients that have difficulty uh, putting in eye drops due to their arthritis? This is a little bit more of an OT question, actually. Yeah, but um, I think that that, that definitely happens. Um, there are ways of being able to put in eye drops that are easier. For mm -hmm. instance, lying down flat and kind of aiming towards the center mm -hmm. part closer to where your nose is. Um, but still, there has to be a little bit of dexterity in your yeah, hands yeah. and limbs to do that. Um, there are also different brands of eye drops that are just generally easier to get in. But yeah. I would say overall, that is a challenge for a lot of people with mm -hmm. any kind of arthritis. Um, and just making your provider know that that's a problem, they can mm -hmm. oftentimes pick ones that are easier to get out of the bottle. Right. So gels are always really difficult, yes. and I think really impossible for a lot of patients, so I don't ever prescribe any gel drops if there are alternative drops. And mm. some packaging you just know is really hard. Yeah, for me, that I am able to do it, but the daily, or the disposable, you know, um, ones that are better because they're preservative free, they're better for your eyes, but they are a little bit trickier to, to open. Mm -hmm.